students in the last two lectures I am going to discuss few case studies of the ternary phase diagrams. So, I am going to take uh, from the very first like in ternary phase diagrams I first discuss the two phase equilibria for the ternary isomorphic system followed by three phase then the four phase equilibria. And the cases which I am going to consider are stainless steel, super alloys and the ceramic phase equilibria between aluminum oxide, silicon dioxide and uh, calcium oxide. So, uh, the first thing which I am going to do is that I am going to show you the binary ternary isomorphic system of gold, silver and palladium. It is very simple, but let, let us look at it uh, carefully. As you know silver melts at about 961 degree Celsius temperature, where gold at about melts about 10,064 uh, degree Celsius temperature. The phase diagram, binary phase diagram between silver and gold is isomorphous type. That is what is shown here. These are all taken from the uh, empty data database. As you see here that phase diagram between gold and silver is looks like a line, but it is not. Basically, it looks like a it looks like a let me just go back and tell you it looks like a uh, isomorphous type that is a lens correct. But because the melting temperature difference between gold and silver is very small that is why you do not see the loop very clearly. So, now uh, this is what is actually the binary phase diagram between gold and silver and gold and between silver and palladium you have a binary phase diagram of isomorphous type again. Palladium melts little higher temperatures as about 1500 50, uh, 1555 degrees Celsius temperature and it seems there is a miscibility gap or dome kind of structure at the palladium rich region, but at low temperatures. So, that does not make much difference solid solution is again FCC type remember both uh, silver gold and as well also palladium have special cubic structure. Now, between between silver and the uh, between gold and the palladium same kind of phase diagram exist only difference will be the te melting temperature of silver will replace the melting temperature of gold ok that is all. So, once we have such a kind of phase diagrams let us now build in the, the three dimension space model here and I am going to do it uh, using color chalk. So, that you understand it nicely. So, it is very easy. Uh, so, if you have a let us first draw the Gibbs triangle that is the compositional triangle this is suppose gold, this is silver, this is palladium correct. So, now I think better we put palladium here because palladium has a higher melting temperature. So, the binaries are like this. So, between gold and silver is very small difference sorry it will be much thin uh, smaller gap ok. So, 961 and 1064 and between silver and palladium again I assume of first time type. 1555, 961 and you have a dome the palladium region. Gold and palladium again same 1064 and 1555 these are the melting temperatures right. So, if this is the binary system in which all the components form isomorphous type the ternary phase diagram will also be like that. So, gold and silver 
real exaggerated, but there will be no gap seen silver and palladium. and palladium and gold this is a phase diagram. So, you have a liquid alpha liquid plus alpha correct this is 961 degree Celsius 1064 and this is 1555 it is not to the scale properly that is why it should have been up up that is what it is. So, one can actually draw the isothermal projections and all these things very easy. You know, isothermal projections looks like cups. If I take isothermal projections little below 1555, suppose it will look like this. Slightly below. correct. Similarly, you can build in all these things. You can draw a little below 1064, then you will have a region on this side and silver side very easy to understand and do it correct. So, this is the first phase diagram, which I thought uh, needs to be discussed, because there are many such isomorphic system okay, uh, exist in the, in the uh, literature and they are not difficult to understand. Okay. So, now let me go, go to the next one, next one is this is two phase equilibria, next one is a three phase equilibria. So, for three phase equilibria first I will show you the binary phase diagrams, then I will try to develop generate the ternary phase diagrams. So, uh, the case which I am going to discuss with you is uh, little different, I am going to discuss silver copper and gold phase diagram. Okay. Silver copper and gold phase diagrams, silver copper as usual as a eutectic phase diagram between themselves, classical eutectic phase diagrams, silver and copper both are FCC, but they form FCC uh, this eutectic phase diagram instead of isomorphic process because their atomic size differences are large that is why. So, it violates the Himmler rule. As you see here, there is a solid solution of silver, solid solution of copper, eutectic reaction between solid solution of silver and the copper in which liquid decomposes to these two solid solutions. Now, between uh, gold and copper, there is uh, at the high temperature between liquid and solid phase diagram is isomorphic plus type with a cron grain melting at 810 degree Celsius temperature at 28 percent of copper, but at lower temperature solid state there are intermetallic compounds forms like AU3 Cu, AU Cu1, AU Cu2, AU C3, AU Cu3. Okay. These compounds are actually truly intermetallic and they have many distinctive uh, features like they undergo order disorder transformations. So, we will which we will not discuss in detail. Then between gold and palladium in fact, I should have been shown you earlier this is the isomorphic phase diagram uh, in forms. If you see here the gap is more on the gold end, but very small at the palladium end. So, once you have such a kind of phase diagrams in which two systems form isomorphous and one system forms eutectic, you will have a three phase equilibrium system right. So, let us now look at it the three phase equilibrium system on the board. So, gold, silver, gold, uh, palladium and copper, nice no, silver sorry silver silver gold and copper i'm sorry i made a mistake so uh, between silver and gold you have isomorphic per system little bit more So, between silver and gold you have isomorphic system we have seen very small gap 961, 1064. Between gold 
and copper between gold and copper you have again another isomorphic system as you see the metallic temperature is similar 1084 for gold 1064 for the silver okay i am not drawing the low, low temperature phases there are low temperature phases which i have shown you and between silver and this is silver right yes silver copper you have a eutectic phase diagram. Silver solution Copper solute solutions, this is a liquid, this is a liquid, alpha plus liquid, alpha, beta liquid. Okay. So now we need to build the we need to build the phase diagrams of the in the ternary system. Well, it is not difficult, but it is a little bit of different from earlier one. So, silver, gold and copper, silver copper has this kind of phase diagrams. and gold copper and this one has isomorphic systems. So, and silver gold like that. So, what will happen is this because of presence of the 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 eutectic the ternary phase diagram will be extended this this will increase the miscibility this will increase the stability of this phase or let us write down this one like this alpha beta alpha beta this is beta this yeah that is all. So, uh, okay. so as you see this is uh, in a ternary system this will be like this and then C like that C will be here we probably should remember that that because of presence of the eutectic the solubility or the presence of this alpha phase will extend beyond even this line little bit instead ahead of the point uh, ahead of this curve which is marked by the point C here. Okay, C is little bit ahead and I discussed to you why it should happen in the class you can go back to my lecture. So, this is what it will look like okay. if I remove this part which is not required then the space model will be like that the one I shown you not a very uh, difficult thing to understand. Correct. So, this is the phase diagram for silver, gold and copper. Now, I am going to show you example of a phase diagram where there are four phase equilibria exist. This is the three phase equilibria between liquid and because this is a reaction is liquidity reaction is liquid going to copper and silver. Uh, 
uh, so therefore, the uh, three phase equilibria exist into the ternary system between solid solution of copper and silver and I have written this as alpha uh, this as a beta right. So, that will extend inside the ternary system that is what is you should remember and these are the melting temperature 961. 1064, 1084. Okay, that's how it will be. So now let me show you the ternary eutectic phase diagrams. For example, of showing the four phase equilibria. I have drawn many, but let me just show you. Let me just draw aluminium, copper and silicon. Okay. Aluminum copper phase diagram is very very complex okay. and aluminum silicon is easy. This is the aluminum silicon eutectic phase diagram 660, this will be higher. Aluminum copper phase diagram is, exact, is usually similar <laughs> with the eutectic. I am not going to draw the all the other things. This part, there are many intermetallic phases present. Okay, but copper silicon is also easy, not difficult. Sorry, this will be much above. So now basic idea is to what is the inside thing, how the phase diagram will look like. Well, it is little bit complex than the earlier ones, but not a difficult things to do. You remember that I have shown you eutectic between aluminum, silicon and the copper. So, uh, between aluminum and silicon it is easy, copper and silicon also easy, not difficult. aluminum copper oops it will be lower
So, uh, I am just doing the half part of the aluminum copper phase diagram up to 40 percent. So, now because of presence of these three eutectic 1, 2 and 3, you will have a ternary eutectic point existing in this triangle correct. So, uh, if, we, if I draw this projection under the ternary triangle, aluminum solution, solution copper silicon, silicon will not be like this. We will like that. Aluminum has no solid solute between silicon, this is a ternary eutectic. This is how it will look like. So, you got a fair an idea, a fair amount of idea how these diagrams to be drawn, correct. And these are all very schematic diagrams which I have shown it. Now, let me take take, take you uh, whatever time I have in this lecture for the uh, iron chromium nickel system in the stainless steel, correct. Stainless steel is basically what? It is a very low carbon steel in which primary alloying elements are chromium and nickel. Classical stainless steel is 188 in, in which you have 18 percent chromium and 8 percent nickel, but concentration of nickel and chromium can vary actually. Normally 75 percent is the iron and 20 approximately 24.8 percent is your chromium and nickel and rest is carbon, silicon, manganese, carbon, manganese, phosphorus, sulphur all those elements. So, first of all what are the binary uh, phase diagrams? Between iron and nickel you have a binary phase diagram in which there is a periodic reaction in the iron end right. You can see clearly here this is the periodic reaction. On the other hand between nickel and chromium there is a eutectic reaction here you can see here about 30 and 45. But between iron and chromium, you have isomorphous phase diagrams with a congruent melting point at 1560 16 degree Celsius temperature. Remember, chromium melts at a very high temperature, about 8, 1900 plus degree Celsius temperature. Correct. Iron melts about 1539 degree Celsius temperature. Nickel, nickel melts about 1456 degree Celsius temperature. So, because of this presence of this peritectic on iron and nickel, and eutectic on the iron and nickel and chromium you will have a three phase equilibrium existing and that three phase equilibrium can be generated by drawing the eutectic point to the periodic point by this kind of constructions along with the solid solubility limits on the both sides in the nickel side and chromium side with the periodic isotherm correct. You could see how this are joined this point is joined to this way and this way and this point is joined there ok. Little bit different, but you must look at they are not directly connected from these to these, but this one is connected to the peritectic uh, you know solid temperature solid point and this one is connected to the peritectic this is the limit of solid solubility of iron in nickel and this one is connected to this end liquid composition for the peritectic reaction. This is the ternary space model not very complex still understandable. Important thing is that so that means you have a ternary phase a three phase equilibrium existing between iron, nickel, and chromium. This three phase equilibrium is shown by a triangle, correct. Now I can project all these things onto the onto the triangle, onto the Gibbs triangle. Okay, this is uh, you see here. These are these projections of the liquidus, 1450, 1440, 1470, 1480. This is chromium iron end, so it has to be starting with 1539, 1520 like that. And this is the peritectic point, this one binary peritectic point, correct, shown here. Similarly, on the nickel chromium side, uh, eutectic point existing where it is about chromium rich end in between, some of this is the eutectic point, ok. And there there is nothing, correct, no isothermal system. So, these are the uh, uh, these are these uh, things, this is the primary phase field of nickel solute solution primary phase field of chromium solute solution, primary phase field of iron solute solutions ok. And the periodic reaction is between there is the compound formation in the iron nickel system. Secondly, uh, well these are all done at different temperature I guess that is why ok. Anyway, 
So, you see here this is the eutectic point here clear. So, peritectic point was sorry peritectic point was clear here at 1500, 1500 uh, 39, 30, uh, 10 degree Celsius temperature, eutectic temperature comes around little lower 1345 and reaction uh, shows that these isotherms actually passing uh, the this eutectic domain. And lastly at much lower temperature that is when everything is solidified, what you have is basically you see here this is uh, alpha prime solid solution of chromium, gamma is a solid solution of Fc solution of iron and what is another important aspect is that iron chromium system at lower temperature there is a phase called sigma forms. Sigma is basically intermetallic compound and this sigma actually forms uh, like a uh, by a monotectoid transformation, it is not actually monotectoid transformation there is a spinel type of transformation that is why which is shown uh, between uh, alpha and sigma alpha plus prime plus sigma, alpha prime gamma plus sigma and sigma sigma plus gamma at different temperatures. So, these are all the phases which are present. So, normally uh, the uh, iron concentration is 75 percent here and chromium is 18 percent. So, it will be somewhere like here chromium okay. nickel is 8 percent. So, here and this is 20 suppose so this will be 8 percent. So, iron is 75 percent. So, 75 percent iron will be this is 100 percent somewhere there. Okay. So, if, if I connect these three points uh, nickel now this is chromium right sorry chromium is here that is ok nickel is this now nickel will be somewhere there 8 percent correct. So, if I connect these three these two are connected ok somewhere there. So, that is why actually the normal stainless steel composition is a gamma solid solution phase this is the gamma region or if you want alpha you can actually get alpha also. This is at a little lower temperatures only thing expanding is the gamma field is expanding much larger domain that is what I said the this is uh, this is what this uh, the stainless steel composition normally looks like the 18 8 this is gamma and uh, if a nickel concentration decreases then you will have alpha plus gamma and when nickel concentration is very low you have alpha stainless steel. So, normally we should consider this part of the phase diagram for that not above that. So, we do not want any sigma phase formations or those kind of things, but it can happen that compositions of the gain boundaries may change during welding or something then sigma can precipitate and this is what is known as sensitization in stainless steel correct. So, uh, with this I like to say that stainless steel phase diagram is much more simpler than we think and uh, this can be easily explained using the uh, chromium iron and nickel binary phase diagrams. So, in the next class I am going to take up uh, the uh, first the su super alloy phase diagrams and followed by this uh, the ceramic phase diagram. Thank you.